Cold Steel has started using 3V on a lot of their fixed blades. This is a Cold Steel Pendleton Hunter. I was interested in the knife. Uh, I like small fixed blades. Um, and I was interested in using 3V and putting it through some paces. And I thought it would be interesting to do a comparison between 3V and 4V. Uh, 3V is a high toughness steel um, very, very high toughness, but it's still got some carbide content, which increases its wear resistance. 4V came along later and was made uh, for applications where you needed a high toughness, but it's got a little bit more carbide content, and so the wear resistance is a little bit higher. Um, toughness is a little bit lower. Um, the Pendleton Hunter is an interesting knife. It's, it's got an extremely ergonomic handle. Um, the coating that they put on it's very good it's very stout it's a, a thick blade it's an aspect that I liked of it I like the general shape I wasn't crazy about the sheath for it so I had a, a custom Kydex sheath made um, this certainly takes care of the purposes that I needed it to um, not to say that the, the sheath that comes with it won't work for you but it I didn't like it. I didn't like the, the, the function of it. As far as the two steels and a comparison, it wasn't really a test. Um, it's known that 4V has slightly higher wear resistance and slightly lower toughness. So I, I didn't really, I wasn't really concerned with doing that test. Um, I wanted to look at the strength of the steel and the toughness of the steels, which is difficult because that's, you know, if it's a wear resistance test, that's one thing. I can kind of control factors that go into it to a reasonable degree, but doing a doing the same thing for toughness is tricky. So I wouldn't call what I was doing a test, but just a comparison, um, just for observation. And this is the kind of thing that doesn't normally make it into a video. Um, it's not unusual for me to do, and probably for other people to do too. I mean, there's probably other people that do the same thing, but to sit down and make a video out of it is difficult because there's no conclusion. There's no, that there's nothing quantitative about it, and you just kind of, you know, you do it and you take the information that you get from it, the the, the observation you get from it, and you just kind of stick it in the back of your head and and have it for reference if you need it in a generalized kind of way. Um, but I wanted to touch base on 3V, and I, I wasn't sure if it would be interesting to throw this in or not, but I went ahead and decided to do it. So the, the cutting that I did, uh, well, as far as the sharpening goes, it was uh, diamond uh, using the DMT diafolds and, and ceramic from Spyderco, and then uh, a series of straps stopping at quarter micron. I took the knives until the point where they were both hair whittling sharp and then started in, in on the cutting. I started in on different kinds of zip ties, um, just going through them, seeing, you know, the, afterwards putting the, the apex under a microscope and seeing if there was any effect at all. It didn't take very long before I, I realized that what I was doing with the zip ties was just having no effect. I mean, the, these steels are just, they're, they're too tough, they're too strong. It wasn't making an impact. After that, I moved on to an aluminum can. Uh, that was kind of a moot point as well. I mean, it left some some aluminum and some paint on the bevels, but it really wasn't having an effect. Uh, I took the, the pine stick that the zip ties were attached to, and I went ahead and cut that up just, just to see the difference in handle ergonomics and how the, uh, how the grinds handled. I mean, the Pendleton Hunter is significantly thicker than the mule. Um... The ergonomics of the Pendleton Hunter is really good. It really, this, this handle material really, really lends itself to use. And it feels like it would be grippy under any circumstances. After cutting the pine at, for the difference in ergonomics, I moved on to different kinds of wiring, uh, working my way through them with slow cuts, looking for damage left in the edge bevel and looking for a significant amount of damage. I, I just wasn't finding. The, the steels were just too strong. What I eventually got into was 19 gauge steel wire and that had the effect that I was looking for. It it was 
able to damage the bevels on a slow cut. Um, again, that's there's there's nothing quantitative about that. It's just it's just interesting that that's how far I had to take it. And something I thought that was interesting with these high toughness steels, I thought, okay, well, toughness is is impact resistance. So if you're just doing a cut, you're really not talking about impact. So I thought, all right, well, let's add impact into it and let's see what happens then. So took a piece of the wire and attached it to the top of a board and on a swing was cutting through it. And what I found was it, it still damaged 4V, but it didn't damage 3V. I mean, not as much, very little. And I thought that was interesting. I thought that, it, you know, to, to cut through it slowly would damage the bevel, but to do it fast wouldn't. And there's all kinds of factors here. I mean, there's all kinds of arguments that could be made, but it, it was what it was. It was interesting observation. So for resharpening, I mean, for, for, for V after the fact, I just, I just worked on a, uh, on a diamond plate, uh, getting back into three V I decided to use water stones, uh, starting with King stones and work my way through them. There is vanadium content in three V. I mean, it's got some carbide in it, but it's a very low amount. And I wanted to see how it how it sharpened with the water stones, not only how it polished, but how well the edge came up, how well the sharpness came up. So I worked with the king stones and made my way through and eventually got into Shaftons and work, worked my way through that. And it does take a polish. I mean, it does. The edge does polish up and the sharpness does come up on it. It doesn't, you know, I've seen steels that, you know, wouldn't wouldn't necessarily get as sharp if you weren't using uh, diamond and ceramic in the sharpening. Uh, 3V does. So it's interesting. It's interesting that a steel that I think is very well suited for fixed blades and for definitely fitted for harder use would uh, would take that polish. And it is low chromium, so it's not stainless. But, you know, for the toughness to be that high, you're, you're, you're probably not going to see uh, a high chromium content. So it's an interesting piece, and uh, I like the knife. It's uh, it's well made. I'm not sure how long the handle will hold up. It, it works very good in use, but as far as over a long period of time, I mean, it's it's an issue I have with the knife, as opposed to something like Micarta or Polish G10 that will, you know, has a more classic look to it and seems like it'll last forever. This handle. While it functions very good, I'm not sure how long it'll hold up. It is what it is. It's not an overly expensive knife, so I'm not worried about it. But I thought it, it was a nice piece, and I'm, I'm glad to see Cold Steel using 3V. I think that's uh, it's a really appropriate choice.